Welcome to Illuminati Silver. We tell you the truth about silver. Today is Tuesday the 15th of October 2019. And this week we're talking almost exclusively about silver. Yes, you heard it correctly. Recently we've been talking about political, geopolitical and economic factors affecting the price of silver and gold. But for the next few days we're going to restrict our coverage entirely to news about silver. So join us and let's investigate. Earlier this month, the Silver Institute published a report produced by Metals Focus entitled Global Silver Investment. Now, quoting their report, and to put all of this into context, quote, The Silver Institute commissioned Metals Focus to undertake a study of global silver investment. The study has two objectives. First, to review current trends within the principal avenues of silver investment, and second, to assess the outlook for each of these, highlighting opportunities as well as any headwinds that may be in prospect, unquote. So rather than go through this report in depth, we shall attempt to summarise it for you. However, if you wish to see a copy of the full report, you can do so by clicking the link we've placed in the description box below. Now this is our summary and commentary. 1. Investor sentiment has strengthened noticeably towards silver as well as other precious metals. 2. During the last eight years, institutional investors have remained sceptical about silver, which is a key reason why it underperformed gold to such a great extent, with the gold-to-silver ratio rising from 30.5 in April 2011 to a multi-decade high of 93.5 in July 2019. 3. Silver's rise to $50 and then virtual collapse to around 1360 in that time reflects the modest size of global silver investment, where relatively small inflows or outflows of capital can have a disproportionate effect on the market. 4. Investors are also put off to some extent because of market liquidity, which is not particularly deep and there are few counterparties available to execute significant trades. And five, in value terms, silver trails gold significantly in a number of investment arenas. Examples include the COMEX, where the gold value positions are five times higher. ETPs are exchange traded products. Gold is nine times greater in value terms. And see physical investments, gold is 17 times greater. So, for example, in 2018, the value of global silver coin and bar demand stood at $2.6 billion, while for gold, the figure was $44 billion. So, from this information so far, this suggests that silver has been the poor cousin of gold. But it also shows that the small size of this market also presents significant future opportunities. So let's look at the investment areas which seem to suggest optimism. Commodity exchanges, the most sensitive to changes in sentiment. The COMEX, for example, has been exceedingly bearish silver until recently whereas investor exposure has moved from a net short position of 190 million ounces in May to a net long position of 312 million ounces in July. Rising silver prices has attracted investors to the Chinese future markets, with turnover of the SHFE, the Shanghai Futures Exchange, rising by 44% over the first seven months of 2019, compared with a 23% gain on the SGE, the Shanghai Gold Exchange. ETP holdings have also gained 
with August having set new volume highs, reaching 736 million ounces on August the 16th, equaling $12.6 billion. Now, incidentally, this compares with the 520 million ounces traded on April the 28th, 2011, when silver was valued at $48. Do you remember those videos where we discussed the future for gold and silver and where we gave our forecasts? We consistently pointed out that any future bull run is more than likely to be the result of the fear or protection trade in the paper markets as opposed to physical buying. Well, at least initially. Well, this report clearly points out that despite these rises in ETP holdings and exchange trades, last year's total demand for physical silver of 166 million ounces was the second lowest this decade and was some 145 million ounces down on just 2015. Now, it won't come as a surprise to find that the two largest markets for physical silver is the US and India. One of the reasons we published our video yesterday, entitled India Economic Growth Slowing While Inflation Rises Implications. We seriously recommend that you listen to it if you haven't already done so, as India is important for physical silver demand. And once again, we've placed a link to this video in the description box below. Now, the third largest market for silver is Germany, but like the United Kingdom and Europe as a whole, silver is subject to VAT. In the United Kingdom's case, it's 20%. And so its attraction is somewhat curtailed by this. Now, the report quotes the following, with which, frankly, we would agree. Quote, Looking ahead, physical investment in silver is arguably one of the most difficult market segments to call. For example, it was revealing that in the United States, when prices started to rise late in the second quarter, the majority of investors remained on the sidelines. In other words, there appeared little belief that the rally would be sustained. However, as the price is forecast to continue strengthening, this should encourage the return of US buying. In terms of the Indian market, bullish price expectations should start to firm, but there is a risk that profit-taking will emerge, especially as silver crosses key rupee price points." Unquote. So we have both a tail and a headwind potential there. Now, mining shares or equities also offer an opportunity, as because of low silver prices, mines have, over the years, cut their costs, so that any rise in silver prices increases their profitability dramatically. Is it little wonder that Keith Newmeyer, founder and CEO of First Majestic Silver Corps, has for years been stating that silver should be, and will be, valued at $100 an ounce very soon? Especially considering when silver rose some $7 in 2016, Keith admits that his share price went up some 5 to 600%. Just imagine how much he'd be worth if silver did touch $100 an ounce. Now, we aren't saying he has a vested interest in calling these super high prices. Or are we? Anyway, back to miners. Huge potential should prices rise. Huge downward moves should prices fall. Or you choose the wrong mine to invest in, which is why generally a mining fund consisting of multiple equities is usually more safe. The report then summarizes the industrial demand for silver with the following words, which the conclusions of which are quite heartening. Quote, the importance of silver's industrial fabrication, which accounts for roughly half of global silver demand, means that silver at times also behaves as an industrial metal. As such, it can take its cues from base metal prices, which also means it is often driven by other macroeconomic developments, such as any deceleration in Chinese GDP growth. This means that the relationship between the performance of the global economy and the silver price is far from clear-cut. News of slower growth can weigh on silver, 
as industrial commodities are sold off. But as the macro backdrop deteriorates further, leading to stock market weakness, silver will benefit as investors adjust their portfolios in favour of precious metals, unquote. Very logical conclusion. So, once again, we have to remind you that we've provided a link to this report in the description box below, simply because it does go into some considerable depth and we cannot do it justice in this relatively short video. But in essence, the report appears very bullish silver, highlighting that institutional investors are now beginning to wake up to the silver investment opportunity. And that as silver has lagged gold somewhat, there needs to be some catching up to do. We would tend to agree insofar that silver, compared to its all-time high in US dollar terms, and we are spe specifically speaking about dollar terms, is currently standing at 35% from its high, whereas gold is closer to 79%. That said, silver is affected by the industrial demand slowdown and has to compensate via demand for it as a monetary metal. Now, of course, those of us who have studied this closely over the years know that the first moves are usually made by gold, and silver then tends to follow. The question is, has gold already made its move, thereby limiting silver's further advance, or has it just began, and silver is on its way to the moon? Subscribers know where our position is, and we've provided links to our 2019 forecast and potential limits below so as to remind you. That said, ever since the channel began, we've always pointed out that silver, taking the long-term view, has tremendous potential. The question is, are we about to realise it very soon, or do we still have a number of years? before it will achieve its inexorable zenith. Let us know what you think. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe and press the bell sign so that you'll be notified of future videos. So until tomorrow, have a great day. We hope you have found this video interesting and informative. And if so, please give it a thumbs up and share it on social media. Please ensure that you have subscribed to our channel and press the bell sign so that you are notified of any future videos. Also kindly visit our website at IlluminatiSilver.com and if you haven't already done so, please subscribe either as a free or paying member for regular email updates and offers. Disclaimer. Illuminati Silver owners come from a background of banking, international wealth management and economics. Having now retired from these worlds, we are not qualified to give investment advice. Therefore, this and other productions must not be deemed to be giving such advice and merely represent the personal views of its owners. <laughs>